Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. It's October 27th and um, we're actually going to revisit a person that we did a happy birthday to uh, just last week. Um, back in 2002, we lost one of my favorite behind the scenes people of all time, Mr. Tom Dowd. Now, in the previous video from last week, I urged you to go check out the documentary, Tom Dowd, The Language of Music. Uh, I'm going to play another clip from an interview with Tom Dowd where he talks about his career and his life, and I'm going to urge you once again to go check out that documentary. I promise you, swear, cross my heart, hope to die, you're going to like it. If you're into music half as much as I am, you're going to like this documentary. It's called Tom Dowd, The Language of Music, and so... In honor of the, what now, 21-year anniversary of his passing back in 2002 on this very date, October 27th, here is more interview with Tom Dowd. We'll go hop-skip through the decades. The 40s would be uh, Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, Lester Young, Joe Turner, Brownie Stick McGee. The 50s would be... The Coasters, the Clovers, the Drifters, John Coltrane, the Modern Jazz Quartet, Bobby Darin. I mean, the, the field gets wider and wider. Uh, we get into the 60s, Sonny and Cher, Solomon Burke, Wilson Pickett. Then we get into the Stax Contingent, uh, Otis, Rufus Thomas. And then we get into Cream and Aretha. Oh, the 50s, how could, oh God, Ray Charles. Okay, I can't run the, by that one. Uh, then we get into the 70s, and now I'm into the Allman Brothers, Leonard Skinner, Rod Stewart, CSN. We get into the 80s, and I'm Dexy's Midnight Runner and more Eric Clapton permutation number four. I mean, from Disraeli Gears to Derek and the Dominoes to Eric Clapton to Eric Clapton to Eric Clapton. Over the span of time that there's been my history with the recording industry, I have gone from spontaneous, live, instantaneous music where you had to go direct to disc. There were no tape machines. And I've gone through the whole revolution to now where a young person can go into Toys R Us or some kind of store of that nature and buy an inexpensive computer and make music. And that's a new art form. The new method of recording and storing information digital is a new art form. The fact that they've eliminated tubes is a step forward. I mean, you wouldn't want to go back to flying a Piper Cub across the ocean if you can get on a 747. It's a new art form. It's a new method. But you can't recreate or do anything that sounds like what the old things were done because of the nature of the equipment difference, the mentality difference, the attitude difference. Too many people today record an instrument one at a time. They use samples, they cheat, they add echo, they do all kinds of things like this, trying to emulate things that are past. If you use today's transistorized amplifiers, you're not gonna get the same effect. You can't. Because here, depending on how loud he plays, how much vibration comes out of the tube generating the sound and going back into the tube and rattling the tube, you don't have that consideration with transistors and new vistas and chips today. And when, as long as you're using old tube equipment, you have this impossible to replicate <laughs> performance each time you play because the tubes keep on changing in value. They keep on changing in, in amount of harmonic distortion because they're aging by the minute. And yet, there are those charismatic moments where everything is like spot on. Exactly. I refuse to record where I'm layering. I insist on recording where I get two, three, four, five, seven, ten people live. And they must play simultaneously because the spontaneity, the intonation, the time differences, somebody plays something and it inspires something else, that's music kind of music I prefer, the music I like. The blues singers seldom ever sang the same song the same way. They sing the same words, but they wouldn't express it the same way. Jazz musicians, uh, they, they make three or four versions of the same song, one in back of the other, like five minutes apart. The solos are all different. That's the spontaneity, and the support is different. That's, that's the beauty of what we're doing. Hey, if I don't like a project, 
I'm not going to do it. If I don't think I can make a contribution or if it's something that I don't have an empathy sitting here for hours doing, what am I doing here? Go home. Okay, there's some songs that I can give input on. There are others that when they go by, I think, I better just accept that the way it is because I don't, it's, it's not anything that I am sensitive to that I would make constructive criticism, so I'll just shush. And then there are other things that they do, and I say, oh, we're starting in the wrong place, or let me come out there and I'll cue you, and I'll go out and conduct, or direct part changes, or tell one person, drop out here, and I'll count when they should come back in. Spontaneity. I mean, I'm have, I have a formula in mind, but I'm trying to affect them that I shape them up. That, oops, there's a little tension that wasn't there when they were doing it the same way they did it last week. I like to unnerve them a little bit to get tension. Because if they're playing the same thing that they've been playing for the last month, getting ready to record, they get into a confident, smooth groove, and it might not, it might be the best way to do the song. And yet, if we just shake them, you know, a grain of sand in an oyster shell and you have a pearl, you just shake them one time, <laughs> it might make the difference. The music is like that. The music, the entertainment business is ongoing, forever changing, stimulating. It's stimulating. It's invigorating. I enjoy it thoroughly. I'm telling you, the man was an absolute icon. The number of people he recorded, whether you're talking about, you know, Charlie Parker and John Coltrane and the Modern Jazz Quartet or, again, Dizzy Gillespie or, or Sonny and Cher or the Allman Brothers or Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, Otis Redding, uh, Leonard Skinner. I mean, Watch that documentary. I promise you it will be worth two hours of your time. And if you don't think you have two hours to, to waste on watching a documentary, well, man, I'm telling you, you know, take a moment for yourself, okay? Some, some of us are so busy, so just we're always on the go, 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 go. And, and I have found as I've gotten older that it's really important to just sit back and just chill and relax and do something for yourself. If nothing else, it's better for your mental sanity. That's for sure. So if I were to give you a, uh, a prescription on how to really enjoy some downtime, watch this documentary. And again, if you're a music fan, half as much of a music fan as I am, it will absolutely soothe your soul to watch this documentary. So it's the documentary, again, is called Tom Dowd, The Language of Music. This interview is not actually from that documentary, but I promise you, you'll get all of that information and way, way, way more if you watch the uh, Tom Dowd, The Language of Music. So with that said, like I said, another opportunity to commemorate one of my musical heroes uh, especially a behind-the-scenes musical hero like an engineer like Tom Dowd. Um, if you enjoyed this, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Know that I appreciate you, and I wish you well. Take care.